Globular clusters are just plain weird. They really are weird. They're introduced in Astronomy 101 along with everything else. Just, oh, you got your, your stars and your planets. This is your astronomy professor, by the way, and your planets and your uh, galaxies and your galaxy clusters. We have your nebulae you have your clusters, which include the open clusters and the globular clusters and blah, 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 blah. But like, okay, yes, globular clusters exist, but that hides so much weirdness. Okay, first off, what, a, what is a globular cluster? They're, they're small. They're relatively small. They're only a few dozen, at most like 50 light years across. But in that tiny volume, they will pack in hundreds of thousands and sometimes millions of stars in a single volume. That means in the cores, in the cores of globular clusters, they're so tightly packed with stars, the density of stars is a thousand times higher than what it is in the solar neighborhood. That means the average distance between stars is a third of a light year that's 10 times closer than Proxima Centauri is to our own sun. That is crazy high density. That's one of the highest densities of stars in the entire galaxy. And perhaps the weirdest thing about globular clusters is that they're old. They are so old. The stars in globular clusters formed somewhere between 8 and 12 billion years ago, and then nothing new has happened since. These are graveyards, or at least retirement centers of the galaxy. This is the Florida of the galaxy. These are the places where stars go to die, where just nothing has happened in them for billions of years. When our solar system formed, when the sun first ignited, these globular clusters were already billions of years old and had already remained unchanged for billions of years. Another clue that tells us just how stable these things are is the fact that they're spherical, that they look like uh, globules, which is Latin for bally type thing. Globular clusters are gravitationally bound. That means all the stars inside of them have enough gravity and they hold on to each other with enough gravitational force that they can maintain this spherical shape despite plunging through the galaxy, moving all that, despite billions of years of interactions with the rest of the galaxy, they're able to maintain that shape. So that is surprisingly weird. And in fact, Globular clusters have been known without us realizing they've been known for thousands of years because there are a few that are visible to the naked eye, like Omega Centauri has been in star catalogs and Alice is for millennia, but to us with the naked eye, it just looks like any other star, a little point of light, what's the big deal? But when you look at it through a telescope, you realize that Omega Centauri is four million times the mass of the sun and sits 17,000 light years away from us, one of the most distant objects you can see with the naked eye. And it's not alone. There are about 150 globular clusters in the Milky Way alone. We suspect that it's closer, the real number is closer to 200 because we can't see all around the Milky Way. So there's between 150 and 200 globular clusters. Other galaxies have their own retinues of globular clusters. Uh, dwarf galaxies will have a few dozen. Medium galaxies will have a few more. Big galaxies will have hundreds of globular clusters. So there's this relationship between the size of a galaxy and the number of globular clusters it has. But there is no universally accepted, understood mechanism for how globular clusters form. But we do have a clue. We have a few clues about how globular clusters may form. Clue number one is that they don't have any dark matter. When you look at a globular cluster and you measure the amount of stuff in the globular cluster and you compare that to the amount of gravity you need in order for it to be globular, it's pretty much equal. There's no need for an a hidden unseen component of matter. There's no need for dark matter inside of a globular cluster. This is an important clue because this tells us that globular clusters are most definitely not galaxies, at least in the present day. Because galaxies, it's actually really hard to define exactly what a galaxy is. We don't know what it means. 
but a definition of a galaxy must include dark matter because dark matter makes up 80 to 90 percent of the mass of a galaxy and so it's the vast majority of stuff inside of a galaxy you so you have to include it in the definition and the fact that globular clusters don't have dark matter tells us that these can't be galaxies they had to evolve differently than galaxies and th so that's one clue the second clue is that we tend to see two kinds of globular clusters. There's one population of globular clusters, about a third of them in the Milky Way, which are younger. And that's there's pretty big quotes around the word younger there. We're talking eight to 10 billion years old rather than 10 to 12 billion years old. So still super old, but not as super old as some of the other globular clusters. These younger ones, tend to be closer to the center of the Milky Way, tend to orbit around the plane of the disk of the Milky Way, and tend to have more metals. And metals is this weird and lame astronomy jargon term that means any element other than hydrogen and helium. I don't get it either, but I'm not in charge of naming stuff, so we have to deal with it. This is telling us that these globular clusters formed from an enriched soup of gas and dust. They didn't form from pure hydrogen and helium. Now, most galaxies have a lot of metals inside of them, but that's because of successive generations of star formation. Every new generation of stars enriches the interstellar medium with more and more metals. But globular clusters don't have active star formation. They haven't had active star formation for billions upon billions of years. So when they formed, they were born already with an enriched source of gas and dust, and then they made all their stars that are somewhat enriched, and then they just stopped. The second population of globular clusters tend to be further from the galactic center, tend to have all sorts of... These tend to be more 10 to 12 billion years old instead of 8 to 10 billion years old, and they have far fewer metals. They are much more pristine. They are much more pure hydrogen and helium. So the fact that we have two kinds of globular clusters and the fact that there is no dark matter at all gives us a hint that these have something to do with the formation of galaxies. They, these are a part of the formation of galaxies. And that's because we think that the younger ones, the eight to 10 billion year old ones that cluster near the center of the Milky Way, the stars in those globular clusters look a lot like the stars in the central bulge of the Milky Way. So the bulge, the central bulge of the Milky Way was the part of the Milky Way to form first, it's the oldest part of the Milky Way. It is eight to 10 billion years old. And so we think these globular clusters formed along with the bulge, the central bulge of the Milky Way. The other, the older globular clusters, these have stars that tend to look like stars inside of dwarf galaxies. So we think these globular clusters formed before the Milky Way. And then over time, the Milky Way absorbed the parent galaxy at eight a dwarf galaxy alive in the globular cluster because it was small and tight and compact was able to survive that and persist to the present day forever chained to the very galaxy that destroyed its parent which is very gruesome but that's astronomy for you. Even though these are major clues they don't tell us where the globular clusters actually come from and actually how they form. And like I said at the beginning, this is a big mystery. We, we're not exactly sure. There are two general schools of thought for forming globular clusters. You can view globular clusters either as a failed galaxy or as an over successful, overachieving star cluster. So if we look at it as a failed galaxy, then dark matter does play a role in the formation of globular clusters. We think maybe whatever process forms galaxies in the early universe, which is uh, dark matter grouping itself together, uh, making giant halos of uh, tons of mass, and then the hydrogen and helium and dust and gas follow along and then collapse together and you get a core of gas and dust that turns into a whole bunch of stars and that's the, your building blocks for a galaxy.
maybe this process happened uh, at a bunch of different scales, giving us dwarf galaxies, normal galaxies, and giant galaxies. And maybe this process even happened below the scale of dwarf galaxies, where a whole bunch of dark matter tried to get together, tried to form a galaxy, ignited a big round of star formation, and then just quit because it didn't have enough mass. Eventually, this globular cluster that does that did form, which would be like a dwarf, dwarf, dwarf galaxy, a super mini galaxy, encounters something bigger. The dark matter gets torn apart, gets pulled out of it through gravitational effects, while the stars are able to maintain themselves in that globular shape. The other approach to building globular clusters is not that they're failed galaxies, but they're overachieving star clusters, where you take the same process that you use to make stars and scale it up to 11. So stars form from the collapse of giant molecular clouds. You have a big cloud of gas and dust, breaks apart, breaks apart, collapses, fragments, turns, pops out a dozen stars, a thousand stars, whatever. Maybe with a globular cluster, you take this process and scale it up so that now you're producing 100,000 stars or a million stars. And that this process doesn't look at all like the formation of a galaxy, but looks more like the formation of stuff inside of a galaxy. We don't know which one of these is more likely to be correct. There's evidence and criticisms on both sides. It's not exactly clear if globular clusters really are failed galaxies or if they really are overachieving star clusters. Either case, with either scenario, we actually don't know how they formed. If you say, okay, it's just collapsing dark matter just like a galaxy but didn't quite make it, how do you make a million stars just like that and then not go on to form a galaxy? Or if you want to be a super star cluster, how do you get a giant molecular cloud to collapse into not a thousand stars, but a hundred thousand or a million stars? That doesn't sound right, but I don't know enough about stars to dispute it. There are challenges with both ideas. So why do we care about globular clusters if, if we can't even figure out how they formed? Well, number one, lots of interesting things happen in galaxy clusters because they are so tight tightly compact. Because they are so dense, you get a lot more interactions and mergers. You get so many mergers that we think there's basically no planets inside of globular clusters, because if a star did have a planet, there'd be enough gravitational interactions to just rip that planet away. But you get lots of cool stuff. You see lots of mergers. You see lots of disruption events. You see lots of flares and cannibalism. You end up with lots of white dwarfs and neutron stars and black holes that they're all there. And so they all start combining and colliding. So their globular clusters are really great laboratories for interesting high energy astrophysics because they're so tight and compact and they sit outside the plane of the galaxy. So they're easy to observe and it's great. Another reason we're interested in globular clusters is they might be homes for intermediate mass black holes. As the name suggests, these are black holes that are bigger than stellar mass and smaller than supermassive. We have only know of a few intermediate mass black holes. We don't know how rare they are in the universe. There have been some claims of detections of intermediate mass black holes inside of globular clusters, but those have not been conclusive. Uh, this would be very interesting and this would tell us about globular cluster evolution because galaxies, when they evolve, they end up with giant black holes. Dwarf galaxies end up with small black holes. If globular clusters follow a similar evolutionary track, maybe they end up with intermediate black holes or maybe not at all. You know, it's, it's right. It's not right. All, right, all right. Maybe there's some extra physics at play that, that prevent black holes from forming. We really don't know. So this is an interesting laboratory for studying the nature of black holes. And lastly, no matter what, whether globular clusters come from dark matter clumps and then fail at being galaxies, or they come from giant clouds of gas and dust and are really, really great star clusters, no matter what, they are definitely tied to the formation of galaxies themselves. Globular clusters are living fossils. These are astronomical coelacanths, all right? These are windows into an epoch that is inaccessible to us. The Milky Way galaxy formed eight to 10 billion years ago and has been evolving and changing ever since. Globular clusters that formed along with the Milky Way have not significantly changed in all those billions of years. So if you want to know what the universe was like billions of years ago, you just have to look at a globular cluster. 
and then we have globular clusters that are even older than the Milky Way itself. So if you want to look for the oldest stars in the universe, the first generations of stars, of what life was like before the formation of galaxies, then globular clusters are where it's at. That's where the party is, folks. <sighs> globular clusters. You gotta love them, even though they're weird and mostly globule-like. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to go to patreon.com slash pmsutter to keep these videos going. And I'll see you next time.